Karibuni. Kwa kipindi kingine cha mazungumzo ni mimi wenu. Dr. Gilbert Gisharu ni nikija kwenu na kipindi mazungumzo. Sasa narudia katika ule mpango wetu ambao tumekuwa nao. Na imekuwa ni kuchambua uh, kitabu cha mwandishi Martin Heidegger ambaye ni Mjerumani mwenye filosofia ambao ilikuwa kali sana katika kitabu chake cha Being and Time na kwa masababu ambayo usiwezi kuyasawazisha nitayaleta kwenu kwa kimombo na mtansome kwani hichi kipindi kimekuwa nikikiendesha sehemu hii nikikiendesha kwa kimombo na mtansome lakini wimbo ambao utatufungulia ndio ni wimbo wa Kiswahili ambao nimekuwa nikiletea watu wakati huu wa shida ambako watu wengi wana uchungu wa roho na kutia nyoyo nuru naona ni vizuri niwaletee wimbo ambao ulimbwa na mwimbaji mashuhuri kutoka sehemu za Tanzania sehemu za Morogoro ambaye si mwingine ni Baraka Maruka Mshehe ambaye wengi wenu mnamjua alituletea santuri ama rekodi nzuri nzuri kama vile Jacinta Jacinta na vile vile wimbo kama shida na wema na nyimbo nyingine nzuri ambazo zimetufurahisha na alitondokea hapo katika sehemu ya nyali ya kafaringi katika ajali ya gari Mungu amweke pahali pema hapo ahera mpaka siku tutakutana naye wakati wetu wa mwisho lakini hivi sasa nitawaletea huu wimbo shida Hakuna kitu kibaya humu duniani kama shida haina mtu wala mwaka wala mwezi kila siku shida kila siku shida kila siku shida kadu taarifa kila siku shida shida haina hodi shida haina mtoto wala mkubwa kila mtu shida ha. kila siku shida na shida haina hodi paka siku ya mwisho iwe siku ya harusi o oh shida iwe mwisho wa mwezi shida iwe siku ya harusi shida uwe na mapesa mengi mama shida shida haina aibu tokea mahali popote umeketi umefurahi Unasikia mtu amefariki kwa ajali ya njiani. Oh shida, hiyo ni shida. Mama oh, oh shida. Oh mama shida, kila siku shida. Na shida haina hodi, haina aibu. Utokea mahali popote oh mama. Uwe na mapesa mengi uwe tajiri uwe masikini shida haikosi na ukiwa fukara ndio vibaya sana oh shida kwa ni shida haipendi umasikini oh oh shida oh shida oh mama oh oh shida uwe na mapesa mengi uwe fukara Mama shida kila siku shida na haipigi hodi aina haya hutokea mahali popote iwe mwisho wa mwezi shida iwe kati ya mwezi shida uwe na mapesa mengi uwe tajiri uwe masikini kila mtu shida huyo ni mbaraka mwishina wimbo wake huo Shida
tufungulie hichi kipindi chetu ambacho tutakiendesha kwa kimomo na mtani swami now for those people who don't understand you know swahili which i was singing and talking using that language and as martin hedger says in his writings language is the house of being and because we have been talking about being in time it is appropriate to bring you something different you listen to something like the song i was singing is in swahili and swahili is spoken by about 200 million people on eastern africa central africa and south and some parts of north east africa swahili is a famous and even chat gbt thank god an artificial intelligence you can write something in swahili and it's going to respond to you that is something i was very happy about to see a happening right in this hour in this place you know in this place as tony morrison tells us in this place which is the us is you know it has had many historical problems whenever it comes to indigenous people and minorities and especially the african americans they have had a short a chain type of life for a long time so he says this place you never know what you're going to get but uh let's leave that apart that's for another time so let's go and this is part 25 of being in time so you can see we have really gone inside actually we are we are winding up because as i said in the previous sections the anticipation uh, resolute anticipatory resoluteness is is the most important things in existence because it prepares us to our finiteness the end of living because our life is not forever is that it comes to an end is not infinite the spirit becomes infinite but we are finite so anticipatory resoluteness as martin hedger has it it helps us to prepare for the demise of death there is birth and there is a uh, death and then there is the history the historicality the histrology within birth and death that journey of ours on this earth Martin Heidegger covers it and there is a temporality and temple and certain of uncertain origin chance and i discussed this in the previous uh, uh, sections now we are reaching to where we coming to a human being you know addressing themselves to their finiteness and that's where time and space becomes of great importance and i'm going to read as usual because if i deviate from the notes if you add lib anything you make it longer than necessary and some of the areas you might not be very articulate about them so i'm going to read as i do the idea is not to take it so much away from how science uh, studies history the truth is that this technique of using dazen's historicality as the foundation of this study has never been verified before by a reputable scholar the mouthful right there but that is how this paper is is mouthful everywhere you touch dazen is a historical you know dazen it means existence and it means us human beings but as a uh, martin heidegger used it as a concept it means existence also so existence has a history something which has existence for some reason it has to have history it has to have histrology and it has it, 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 it has got to have a, a temporality and temple that means 
through existential ontological route using ex extastical, horizontal, or temporality doesn't is historical. This revelation is very important when he quit histology, the science of the study of the history of entities found in the world and so have a worldview with the historicality of Dasein. Sometimes if I don't combine the sentence properly, it doesn't bring out the meaning, but I hope you got that concept. Histology is a science used for the study of history, in this case of entities with a certain theme. Because the entities which who make our design be able to exist on this earth or world are the ones which actually in the end end up making history. All the entities that make Dazan able to exist form history. As a result of being in the world, the entities who make its existence possible are able to be unconcealed ontologically. The method used to unconceal the entities who are associated with dozens' existence in this case are known. At the same time, histrology is used in this case to discover entities that are linked to the past and are found in the world and are, in, and are next to Dasein in its everydayness and they are called the they. They are your neighbor, the they. The question here is how much is known about the past and how are the entities related to those identified to be linked to Dasein's existence? Entities in this case are discovered through existential ontological routes. But as long as Dyson's being is historical, this having been discovered through ecstatical horizontal temporality method, which possesses an element of having been, which is equivalent to past, which histology uses to discover entities that have a history. And in quotes, in brackets, in quotes, the way is in general prepared for such thematizing of the past as can be accomplished in existence. You got to decipher that one kind of and churn it that the way you do to cotton, spreading it out so you can contextualize what is saying and, and using uh, Jackie's Derrida disconstruction method, the text sometimes might not be saying on its surface, might not be saying has has hasn't brought the theme out, the the aesthetics, the nuances, the transit, and any meanings. So you got to go deeper to get the meaning. Only dozen is primordially historical. So what is its equivalence in histology, which is the scientific method of deciphering entities within the world who are involved in dozens existence or being its neighbors the day. You now I say the day is your neighbor. The entities which are within the world discovered scientifically have a history. So for this reason, we have a state of having been as a characteristic, so equivalent to those entities who have been discovered and helped dozen to exist and are historical in nature. Existence has a past and dozen is always existing. As a result of having this characteristic, it has a state of having been, which means it is a state of past. This commonality between histrology and historicality equates the two methodologies used for deciphering the entities found within the histrology and historicality. 
The entities that are historical have a similar characteristics with Dasein, who by nature is historical. Also, Dasein is finite at some time stop to be within the world and they acquire a state of present at hand. So they, they, they become uh, uh, finite. That means their end has come. And they become whatever is mentioned by Martin Heidegger as having a state of present at hand. It means it has become obsolete. Present at hand, for example, are things which are yet a cons they, they, they are hidden. They haven't been discovered and concealed. When they become, co they are concealed. They have to be unconcealed as entities to be known to us and to start having a history and historology. Pardon me, we just deviation a little bit of explanation. In comparison, the relics of history were once ready at hand, being put to work by a dozen of the day or just existing around him. At last, they become relics of history and for that matter historical and can be said to be in a state of present at hand, a kind of thought I had not could expounded the meaning of the present at hand. And right there you can see uh, you can uh, have the meaning of present at hand, meaning something has become obsolete or is no longer in use and it is history disappears, you know, as some items we discover artifacts in archaeology. And we find a spoon that people were using in the millennial, in a time gone, has stopped being used. So you go to study it and see, oh, was this a, a, a utensil, was it a spoon, or was it something for masonry, uh, whatever it was, when we, it becomes extinct. The, the world historical materials are the one which help us to be able to interpret the world they occupy. Historical remains tell the history of Dalzai. They give him historicality and also they tell the existence of the historian, in this case Dalzai himself. The above facts form the existential foundation for historiology as a science. At the same time, their existence connect with the fact that Dalzai is always striving for existence. For histo so historology exists, so does design. You know, they, 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 they live in symbiosis. In, in, in symbiosis. The sorting, acquiring, and making safe the remains of history, these entities automatically show association with design. For they within the world, for the fact is that wherever there are relics of history, this is by itself, this by itself show Dasein was there during the discovering of those entities. There can never be history without existence or Dasein. What is the object of histology? Is it the entities within the world? That's a question we pose there. I should have put a question mark. In quotes, this is the essential foundation for histology as a science, even for its most trivial and mechanical procedures. Histology is linked to historicality very closely as a result of the findings given, then this might open a way to know what object is at the center of the science of histology. The study of histology at this point will be broadened to try and bring it to the same level with the study of authentic historicality and try to unconceal the object 
behind its study at the same time try to find out its ability in disclosing entities what has been there and quotes reputation being in play within trying to get at this study so reproduction and reputation in hyper reality of somlacra by jackie's uh, bull riyad is kind of restated there in a subtle way uh, in the word reputation because you'll find image in the judicial world becomes king and reputation and reproduction in the hyper reality becomes the reality the reality as we knew it in modernity becomes completely muddled up in post modernity because reputation image and reproduction becomes the art of who we are that's another subject of another day but I just wanted to expound on reputation. You can read the book Simulacrum by Jacques Bourriard. It came out in 1983. You'll start to get the concept of postmodernity, which uh, Martin Heidegger touched on, you know, I think knowingly or unknowingly. What has been there past, what has been there in the past is made possible by the activity of repetition for it brings it out authentically histrology is revealed from historicality in the above study the historical object here is design which has a state of having been there and also has existence at its characteristic so uh, uh, it, if you look at the history touring and the computer science. Turing talked about computation and the binary uh, sciences of the digit. Long time. And people keep on repeat repeating it. Temporality kept on bringing it into the present, making present and present. And temporality was temporizing and the tempo was taking its steps. So at the end, in 1921, Ada came up with this big machine which was doing computation of figures using a logarithms. That is still repetition of what Turing did. In, he, he brought the aspect of the binary, one and the zero, the king, which also the old Egyptian, when they were doing the pyramids, they're the ones who discovered zero and one. Zero and one was discovered in Egypt by the people who are building the pyramids. And Turing, in his computer sciences of the 17th century or 18th, he pondered about the concept of the digit. But you can see we are kind of revisiting it over here. Histrology is revealed from historicality in the above study. The historical object here is Dasein, which has the set of having been there and also has existence as its characteristics. So histrology can be said to be its theme. All its meanings lead us to the facts, remembering that Dasein is a factual entity. Dasein is so factual. That's why you see we live for nothing else but facts and figures. That's why when you find there is legal and there, is it a fact or just is legal? So facts and figures are the ones we go for. And if they tally with the object, that means the language tallies with the object. We start saying those statements are true facts the meaning but sometimes let's go into depth of that so much because meaning and and facts and truth sometimes they they disagree a little bit that's another uh, thing I've, I've got to watch out because it's another philosophy which you need to be very very particular Dazen is 
actual due to its ability to exist. Then its factuality is possible because of its resolute project, a magic wand of sort. When one comes to Dyson's existence, anticipatory resoluteness is Dyson's potentiality for being. Against many odds in its everydayness, Dyson is resolute to exist. Resoluteness is what makes us, you know, be able to achieve the things we achieve in this world. You're always striving. You're always struggling, you know, to get something, you know, out there to your brothers that might help them, you know, fight a disease like COVID, which uh, the, uh, the MNRA, MNR, the gene that... Uh, the messenger gene that is able to tell the protein of the body to produce uh, antibodies to fight COVID was discovered by this lady Kareko. She got a Nobel Prize the other day. We thank her so much for that. That's what I'm talking about. You know, these things, there has been repetition, reproduction, people trying out in the laboratories. And up to now, they discovered MNRA, the messenger yeah, uh, gene, that has got magic powers, has got a wand, and it can actually make us be able to produce vaccines at a faster rate. Because once you introduce it into an experiment, it hastens it very quickly to help create the vaccine for this virus. So you can see uh, this is what I'm talking about here. Resolute for existence. We always discover something to cure, something which is fighting to, to make us extinct or kill us. We always strive to get the entities to destroy it. Dozens' existence is authentic, and these themes are all in its factual realm, fate, destiny, world history. They are found within parcels within the realm, factual realm of fate, destiny, and world history. Dozen is thrown out there facing all kinds of challenges. All the facts about him point to having been there in the world. Historicality equals heterology, anticipatory repetition, an ability common for the two characteristics, historicality and historology. This is, this is Heidegger at his, his best, because sometimes I might have missed some paths to synchronize as best as possible, but it could open some areas so please go in here and expound on what I'm saying and make it better because I cannot be perfect. Histrology, which has universal characteristics, if this is the case, the historicality falls in the same category, then the question is still, in quote, what is the object of histrology when it comes to history? The ball is on your court. The object of histology is the entities which are unconcealed from the world of the present at hand and ready at hand. These entities, some of them, exist proximally to Dasein, and some are in the realm of those who help in the existence of Dasein. Because the entities that actually become useful to Dasein and make him who he is. Entities are discoveries of science. The existence of Dasein and the discover, excuse me, unconceal, unconcealing and discovering and deciphering of entities is all for existence of Dasein. At the same time, in the primordial state, entities are also unconcealed with the help of existential ontological phenomenology. 
temporarily acting as a catalyst for their concealment of these entities. These entities are in the class of those who help in the existence of Dasein. So a, a good exam, MNRA, is an entity. It's a messenger in the genes. And it, 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 it became unconcealed. Who? MNR becomes a who entity who helps in a dozen's existence. So that's, that's, that's the being. Being and time. That's a being. It, it becomes a being. Historically has, historicality has this power of repetition, using the power of temporality to temporize, which means historizing at the same time. The, the, the time travel, you know, time travel. Time travel. The, 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 what is the Hopkins, uh, this uh, great scientist from Oxford, is called John, John Hopkins? Not John Hopkins, it's Hawkins, the great scientist from Oxford, who a history of time, history of time, is, you know, is in the same concept. His historicality does not play about with the present. For present is replaced by making present, innovation, which has been missing to, be, to better the life of the community. Rather, temporality temporalizes ecstasy in play, temporalizing the equivalent of repetition. Histology is not able to do the above trick, so it is out of the question here. So you can see his history, histology is also particularly for having been. Making present, histology becomes like it takes the back burner. History is not made by the uh, looking at the past. It is in any the future. It is al almost the archiving of the past. So when we are talking of making present and present being pushed to become the future, then histology uh, takes the back burner. It's kind of ab abstraction. Because if you don't, if you cannot abstract, it is very hard for you to comprehend uh, Martin Heidegger. He is, he, he, he uses abstraction to his, to the max. Because just to conceptualize temporality and tempo and making present, present and grounding and everydayness. All these are concepts very, very much in abstract. And you go to kind of Kuzichanua, Kuzichamboa. That's I'm using Swahili there because some of my listeners are Swahili. If I say Kuchamboa, Kufafanua, then you're going to understand them much better. Let me check how much time we have spent there. 33 minutes. Let me just continue a little bit. The innovation brought forth by historicality allows historology to temporize the innovation so that its meaning as an entity is registered in the history of the day. Fateful reputation is a magic wand that exposes the unconcealed entities. Then these entities are taken over by histology and they in future become items of history. All this activity is possible through historicality, temporality or temporalizing. This is just like uh, uh, this sentence is very, very good for me to kind of decipher it a little bit. The fateful repetition. It's like uh, evolution and uh, mutation. Is a there is huge element of chance. Jackie Smonod, 
chance and necessity are what made us. In that Big Bang theory, bang, there are chemical reactions that happened within that Big Bang theory that accidentally triggered the species of man. And we started to develop from small species. That's controversial. There is a spirit, religious side and there is a scientific side. When you go into that, then you're stepping on some people's toes. I'm going to just leave it for another time. The history of the above entities has been possible through historicality. But at the same time, they could have been unconcealed through the route of science where research is or are conducted using experiments in which the entities are discovered and in the future these are held as historical. You know, I talked about the COVID-19 uh, vaccine, you know, it's an entity. They have been discovered through science. They're going to go into the archives of history as being having been helpful to uh, the existence of human being. Then I talked of the chance, reputation, temporality and tempo, and certain origin, tempo. The meaning of tempo is uncertain origin. And uh, uh, Ileo, in her book, beautiful book by Sister Ileo, uh, she discusses about the part the spirit plays in experiments human beings play or in a mutation itself chance and necessity there is element the part played by spirit is what creates chance to work together with science and that's why religion there is a fine connection and you can you can expound it to bring that religion is necessary in our lives because it also plays part in the repetition, in the temporality and tempo of things happening. Like I said, in evolution, there was a chance. When there was a Bing Bang theory, there was a chance. The spirit played part. We want to create human beings and God created human beings. Histrology, the science route of uncovering entities, has the liking of being linked to universality and truth facts for they are the very part that make histology authentic. Histology is very much tied to the concept of existence. The facts that make up the history are lifted from existence 